What's going on, everybody? It's finally Friday, and I really didn't think I was going to make it this week. Uh, gigantic slate. We've got 10 games. There's crazy injury news all across the board. It's going to be a really wild night. Um, last night, I'm indifferent. Um, just Max entered the quarter. The slate was terrible. I was able to scramble out and get TJ Warren out. Yay. I mostly scrambled him in with Josh Jackson. Boo. So, uh, you know, I was just kind of running in place for this one last night. This would be my best lineup. Um, which, congrats on me for getting into JaVale. I didn't even realize I had exposure to him. So that's that's always a great start. Uh, I ran the top 150 <clears throat> based on actuals. You know, it's you're rarely going to land on those. Uh, Kyrie had a, a pretty solid night at point guard, but there wasn't a lot to love. Um, Sean Livingston had the second most uh, in the top 150, but you were never going to be playing him in any sort of real way. So some of this isn't really realistic. And with that said, I'm going to delete Sean Livingston and run it again. Those aren't realistic lineups, in my opinion, so... You wanted a lot of Durant, who picked up the slack with Curry going down. Uh, became an essential play, but uh, who saw the Nets stack being the stack that you needed? Karis LeVert in almost every one of the top... Well, 100% right now. Um, Rondé Hollis-Jefferson in a ton of lineups. Alan Crabb in a ton of lineups. Um... As it turns out, Nets were the stack. Uh, Dragic with a, an okay game. Uh, there just wasn't a ton of value out there. Cut lines and some of the big single entry stuff were down in like the 280s. I mean, you're getting a ton of like Malik Monk, Shaq Harrison. Uh, it's just, it was a wasteland. Uh, if you had a ton of Durant, you were probably in pretty good shape. Draymond with a monster game. Um, Aldridge was really, a, you know, a solid play. Uh... I had a bunch of Adams and Whiteside, um, which went well. My other center was Embiid, not as much. But I had a you know a boatload of Josh Jackson, so I'm happy that I was able to get back to neutral at least. Um, but enough about last night, because tonight is huge, and I'm probably going to ramble for a while. So, first game up, Pistons hosting the Bulls. Uh, Pistons with a 110.25 implied total, which is ninth. Uh, they are eight-point favorites at home against Chicago. Um, this is over here. Is the uh, the chart of just the the fantasy five by five stuff? So I just wanted a reference on the same screen. Um, so I wanted to know sort of where teams stack up position by position. If it's relatively neutral, it's not something I need to pay attention to. But if there's any extremes, that's when I'll dig in. So Pistons obviously have an exceptional matchup. Um, you know, near the top for point guard and ish. Absolute best matchup for shooting guards. Uh, you know, still a positive matchup at small forward. Positive for Blake. Very positive for Drummond. Um, liking the Pistons is not much of a stretch here. Drummond grading out as a B-plus on both sites. Uh, it would be hard to not like him. Bulls should be playing... Um, Robin Lopez, like, I don't know, 10 to 15 minutes or something, but I'm going to really seek out Andre Drummond. I think that he's in a really good spot. And, uh, you know, I sort of feel the same way about Blake, especially with Blake playing better now. You know, four straight games in this 40-something point range, you know, 38 here, but still, uh, he had been really bad. I think that both of these guys... Um, We'll have uh, some pretty sizable ownership uh, for this ten-game slate, as much as uh, as much as they can be. There's there's so much value out there tonight that um, ownership on the higher uh, price guys is going to be uh, bigger than normal. Uh, even though Reggie Bullock's got like a decent matchup, uh, it's going to be hard for me to get there. I do want to give him a little bit of a boost. Where's he hiding? Down at small forward because obviously. 
do think he needed to be a little bit higher. Not that it matters much. But I will have no issues with a, a bunch of Drummond who should do whatever he wants to do against the Bulls. Uh, Blake, again, should not have many struggles with uh, marking in on D or Bobby Portis or whoever the hell they're going to run out there. And then uh, I think Ish is a, you know, a relatively safe play tonight just because of how bad the Bulls are. Um, I'm going to assume that the Pistons are still trying relatively hard, so they've been running everybody out. You know, Drummond, Griffin, Bullock, Ish, they're all playing 35-plus minutes, so they're getting close to the season being over, but for right now, um, I think jamming in their top minutes, guys, are not a bad idea. Um, yeah, uh, my exposure will be pretty solid for Drummond and Griffin. You know, if you want to get... Dwight Bikes in a, a GPP lineup or two, I, you know, it's a little bit further down for me, but it, that'll be, I know that'll be some of the questions that I'll get. But yeah, focus on Drummond and Blake. Um, there's value at other spots. There are other teams that uh, we're going to want to exploit. Oh, the Bulls. Bulls 102.25 implied total is 17th. Um... They do have a good matchup here, actually, against centers. Portis shows up here second. Not that Portis is going to be getting all sorts of run, but... Levine with a tough matchup. Let's take a look at that. Second worst matchup for shooting guards. Four big games, seven duds, never a monster. Uh, I rarely like Levine anyway, so that's that makes me feel pretty good. It's just a tough spot. You know, we've got 20 teams playing tonight. Um, it's not going to be the time to grab lots of options off of teams that are atrocious. Uh, there's too much variability here. I'm not going to seek out Levine. I don't expect to see him pop up a lot on anything that I'm doing. Um, you know, Markinen will fit in a little bit. Uh, he's a C or a B minus, depending on the site. Um, you know, Pistons are... Or, you know, Bulls are neutral for that matchup of power forward, so I have no issues with Markinen. I don't have any real issues with Dunn. Um, he's just, I think, a little too expensive on FanDuel. But, there's again, there's, there's so many better options out tonight. You can see, like, Nuggets, Lakers, Blazers, Warriors, Kings and Magic, Clippers, Cavs, like, all of these late games are going to have a ton ton of interesting stuff in it so i'm not going to try to force in any of this like muck if it's not good value and with the league cracking down on the bulls right now and having to play you know justin holiday and robin lopez some scattered amount of minutes to for them to think that the game's not bullshit even though everybody knows that the game is bullshit it's just a farce um so yeah, long story short, I don't really want to have much Levine. Uh, he's a little bit more appealing on DK just because of the price. Markinen is okay, Dunn is okay, but there's nothing in on the Bulls side of this that I'm going to seek out. If I'm doing anything from this game, it's it's Drummond and Blake. Pacers, uh, 109 implied total is 11th. They are 8-point favorites at home against the Hawks. Um Obviously a solid matchup uh, for Indiana. Atlanta not very good on D. Also in the middle of a, a very solid tank. Um, news here is that Darren Collison could potentially play. Uh, he would be expected to come off the bench right now. Um, by all accounts, you can swap him in for Joe Young's minutes. So doesn't really matter in that regard. Uh, but we do want to take a look at this because... Obviously, uh, the Hawks are bad, and there are some pieces here that we want to look at. For example, if we take a look at Indiana here, they've got a really good score for small forward, so I want to take a look at that. Bojan with the second best matchup. Ten big games, four duds, and five monsters against Atlanta at the small forward position. Um, I have a bundle of interest in Bojan. I think that he deserves a boost for uh, this matchup. Uh, 
Um, I think that on a night where we're going to have a lot of guys at a lower salary for value jamming in with a bunch of higher guys, I think Bojan looks pretty good in that uh, that mid tier. I know that the you know you're seeing a D plus and a D minus, but the key to all of this is it's always more deep than the grade. Um, all these grades are relative to the slate, so you know there's there's value out there all over the place. But I think Bojan's in a sneaky spot that people might sleep on because of all of these later games. It wouldn't shock me to see like Bojan have a big night and show up in the the top actuals lineup tomorrow morning and be a guy that's relatively low owned. But basically, I'd have no problem with these first four guys. I don't have any issue having Oladipo. Now, granted, he is pretty expensive, but it's not as if um, Atlanta is going to be some sort of tough matchup anywhere on the floor. Uh, I think that Miles Turner looks like a great value, 6,300. You know, coming off a 38-point game uh, at that price point, that's amazing. You're not looking for much else. Like, it's not as if Atlanta is going to be locking him down. If we can keep these four guys on the floor, um, there's a really realistic chance that at least two of them pop off. Uh, if I had to rank all four of these guys, I would say I'd prefer Turner. Um, Olad... Ooh, I don't know. I would go Turner, Oladipo, Young, Bojan. Because, I mean, there's a reason that he's showing up as a D+. Plus. Um, his salary is a little high. I just think that he's in a he's in a really good spot to maximize the right side of his curve. So, uh, it's risky. Uh, I would probably only be looking at Bojan and GPPs. But I think that's the perfect scenario for him. Um, I'll likely have a, a, a healthy amount of Miles Turner, uh, but I'm kind of like a ridiculous Miles Turner fan. So Hawks 101 implied total, so 19th on the night. Um, this is going to be another one of those games where we're not super interested in a ton of it. I don't want to be chasing guys on teams that you know aren't good. Like, they could sit Kent Bazemore at 655, and it wouldn't shock me. So Torian Prince, you know, D minus, D minus, not a lot to like there. He's probably safe. Um, if you think he's going to play, like, I wouldn't have much of a problem with using him. I just don't see a ton of upside on a night with so many options. Schroeder actually has a really difficult matchup. Um, and by really difficult, I mean dead last at point guard. Eight duds. Nobody has gone crazy. I want to go ahead and bump him down so that I don't get too much of him. There we go. Uh, John Collins, you know, I like him. I expected with his, uh, his minutes boost... <clears throat> after the All-Star break, that he uh, he would be filling up the stat sheet a little bit more. I don't know if he's just tired, but he hasn't been what I was expecting him to be as the year has gone on. Uh, he's still in an okay spot, and he's the type of guy that is going to get the run even if they're tanking. So of all the guys on this squad, I think Collins is the safest play out of everybody. Um, not a ton to worry about defensively from the Pacers, so Collins should just be able to be out there and be okay. 6,000 price tag is a, a skosh too high for me, but he's just, he's a guy tonight, as, as best I can do. Baysmore, B minus, really? So I liked Baysmore here. Um, it just seemed like he was a little bit underpriced. You know, I don't, I don't mind it. I find shooting guard difficult sometimes, so I think that firing up Bazemore a little bit is okay. But you're not finding anything in this game that is just going to knock your socks off. Um, all of that is coming in the late slate. Uh, yeah, I don't see anybody else that jumps off the page as like a crazy value. I mean, Tyler Dorsey a little bit because he's been getting additional minutes and he's at minimum salary. But... That's a different sort of play. You're not 
you're trying to fit in, you know, multiple big name guys and taking a roll of the dice on Dorsey. I get it. Uh, there's going to be a lot of risk, but you know, two games ago he went for 24 and a half, and if you're getting that at minimum salary, you are a happy camper. Raptors Rockets. Um, I would have liked this game to be a little bit closer. Uh, or I would have liked Toronto to be a little bit more full strength. DeLon Wright uh, is likely out. Uh, OG Ananobi, no go. So, you know, you're, they're missing out on like 50 minutes worth of guys that are really good. So I would have liked to see this matchup at full strength. Um, let's see, where's Toronto at? Near the bottom, um, you know, uh, Rockets defense is good uh, people just don't realize it because of their pace and their scoring uh, so this could be an interesting game I'm anxious to see it DeRozan with the B across the board um, I'd be pretty inclined to like that uh, second best matchup for shooting guard so I definitely want to give him a boost um, you know it's not like James Harden is out there playing on ball defense he's probably asleep so let's boost up DeRozan I think he's uh he's somewhat I'm gonna want to have a good bit of especially at 8200 coming off the 55 point game um all signs point to a, a game that fits DeRozan like a glove I'm, I have a lot of interest there have they played it all this year sure they have now that I say I'm sure they have I'm sure they haven't Ugh, vicious cycle oh, we will be going live tonight this is the the sort of night we want to do it. it should be a fun stream yeah they played earlier this year he went for 40 so you wouldn't be upset with that game 13 of 16 from the line 7 of 16 from the field yeah I think uh, having a lot of DeMar DeRozan is not going to make people upset tonight Kyle Lowry, you piece of shit. <laughs> C and a D plus. I had a ton of Lowry here when he played 23 minutes and got 20 points. Didn't have a ton of Lowry here when he played 41 minutes and put up 57. So, oh, not a big fan of you right now, buddy. And really, I mean, he's in a terrible spot. He gets Chris Paul. Um... I, he's not a guy that I want to focus on. This seems like a really good spot for Ibaka, though. I know he's coming off a game where he played 12 minutes, but if they're not going to be playing Ibaka big minutes against the Rockets, then like he's not going to be playing big minutes. Ibaka is tailor-made for a series against Houston, so at 5,000, um, this feels like a pretty good game for Serge Ibaka. I, won't, I don't trust him. Um, he's been putting out too many duds, too many sixes and thirteens. But uh, in a GPP, like, you know, if I said Abaka went, if Abaka had thirty-five fantasy points, nobody'd be like, "Oh my god!" I mean, I, you know, you should, but Abaka's going to be a sneak, I think. Well, at least I hope a sneak. Uh, Van Vliet is just good. Uh, might be able to get an extra minute or two because of Delon Wright being out. Uh, but, you know, mostly he's just a second unit guy, a flyer for a GPP. Most of the other guys down the line I'm, I'm not really interested in. For me, uh, this game, or this side of the game, is all Damar and Serge. Uh, Rockets, 110.75 implied total is 8th. I don't know if I said this before. There are one and the Rockets are one and a half point favorites in Toronto. Just just an awesome game. Uh, if we look over here at Houston, tough matchup. Uh, really negative across every position except for point guard. Eleven two and ten six. I like the idea of Harden here, but hmm. went for fifty five against them earlier in the year. 
Wow, 19 of 19 from the line. Uh, Toronto puts people on the line a lot. So that's something to pay attention to. Harden shot 19 free throws against them earlier in the year. And Toronto is 27th in the league in defensive free throw rate. Hmm. That makes me feel like James Harden is really safe for... Well, not really safe for cash because Toronto is obviously good defensively. But I think I like Harden in cash for that sort of reason. If he can, you know, shoot 15 free throws or something... Makes it a lot easier to fill up that stat sheet. I'll have a decent amount of Harden, but I think I like the upside of DeRozan in a GPP more. Uh, Ariza's generally not for me, especially in games against teams that take away the three. That's the only thing that he does. Um, Toronto takes the three away better than almost any team in the league. Uh, first in corner three frequency defense, third in everything above the break, you know, second overall. So I would rather uh, find my value elsewhere compared to Trevor Ariza. Now, Chris Paul, um, I think this is a good spot for him. I think this is a spot where he comes out and has a, a really solid game. Um, he's all over the place, you know, games in the high 20s games into the 40s uh this is going to be one of those spots where i think it's good to have chris paul um so basically i would rather have DeRozan than harden in the gpp scenarios and now i would rather have chris paul than lowry in well any scenario uh i'm gonna like having the ability to to jam in value to be able to get to paul tonight so i, I will have a lot of paul and uh DeRozan as of right now. Only other guy I would want to look at would be Clint Capella. Um, Raptors are relatively neutral against centers. Three big games, two duds, one monster. So I don't think it's anything to write home about, really. Um, if you're fond of Clint Capella tonight, I would understand, but only coming off in 19 minutes, so he should be relatively rested and should be looking to get some time. Uh, I don't mind it. This could be a situation where uh, the Rockets go small. You know, lineups like Harden, Ariza, Paul, Mba, Mute, Tucker. You know, fit Gordon in there as needed. So I don't think they're going to need to lean on Capella as much in this game. And I think that Toronto is too smart defensively to just get beat over and over on like a Capella pick and roll. Only one way to find out, though. One second. Okay. Let's go to Memphis. Said no one ever about their basketball team right now. Uh, Grizzlies, 94.5 implied total uh, is 20th. They are nine-point underdogs at home against the Jazz. So you see all these black dots on here? That's just a quick sign that the Grizzlies suck. Um, if you want to play Marc Gasol at 7,700 on FanDuel or 7,200 on DK, I will not begrudge you that. He is the only person on there with a pulse. Jamichael Green's salary is now high enough that I'm not super interested. I don't want to talk about this game or this team. I'm not going to try to fit in any of these guys. Um... Sure, somebody's going to pop off. It's not the place that I'm going to be uh, doing my research. It's a terrible matchup for everybody except for Marc Gasol. So don't pay attention to anyone else other than Marc Gasol. Let's go to Utah. 103.5 implied total is 16th. This one we can actually look at and be happy about it. Um, very solid matchup. Grizzlies are you know, a bit on the ropes, that's for sure. Um, you do have to worry a little bit about a blowout potential here. He's so good. Uh, so Donovan Mitchell, B on FanDuel, A- minus on DK. I don't necessarily love it, but man, oh man. He is going to, he should be able to feast. If he wants to just go out there and put it on them, he can. Uh, I'll have him a bunch. He's not my main focus, but... 
you know, he looks great. Gobert, 9,200 on FanDuel, 7,700 on DK. Oh, boy. That is a bit of a range. Um, he's been playing out of his mind, though. 60-pointer, 50-pointer, 48, 43. Well, the 43 at this salary. How much has it jumped? Yeah. This is a dude that was 7,900 a couple nights ago. Giant leaps in uh, Gobert's salary. I'll have almost no Gobert. Um, I like him. You know, I think he's fine. He could have a big night. But in a GPP with that salary jump, it's not for me. Uh, in cash, I think that you could probably make a case for it. But there's just so much value out there that uh, I think paying Gobert's freight at a salary, you know, $1,500 more than he was four or five days ago is going to be is going to be a little difficult. Um, I mean, this is just going to be a slow slog of a game with a Grizzlies team that's just fighting to be a functional basketball team. Uh, strikes me as the type of game that, like, Derek Favors can go, you know, 9 of 11 from the field and 12 rebounds or something. Just efficiently eating all over them. Uh, I probably wouldn't look to, like, Rubio or Ingles, but I rarely do. I think those guys are overpriced right now. Um, somebody's going to go off for the Jazz. I would lean most towards having parts of Mitchell. I don't see a lot of value on the rest of the team. Just want to get down to these good games. Uh, Bucks, 112 implied total is fifth. They are 10-point favorites at home against the Knicks. Um... This is going to be a fun one. So because of the amount of value that's out there, I really like Giannis for multiple reasons. One, great matchup. Um, second best matchup for power forwards, if we're counting Giannis as a power forward. But let's just count it as the Knicks aren't very good and we'll assume he's a power forward. But with so much value out there, it's going to be easier to pay up for guys, so... I would like to have a decent amount of Giannis. I think he's in a really nice spot. Uh, home game, you know, coming off some rest. Uh, this should be a game where he just absolutely takes over. No worries about having Porzingis out there to contend with. He just should basically have a field day if he wants it. Um, I also like, you know, Chris Middleton a good bit. 7,000. Uh, he went for 45. Uh, two nights ago, you know, I've got him projected for 33, he needs 35 for his baseline value, so there's no reason he can't get back up to 45 again. Um, Bledsoe, B and B, um, hmm, let's think about this here. Bledsoe did have three straight games in the 40s before his last game, but I'd feel pretty safe with Bledsoe in cash. Uh, he doesn't strike me as an amazing GPP play tonight. Um, Jabari. Yeah, I guess Jabari's probably playing a little bit more minutes at the four compared to Giannis. Uh, so this could be a spot where Jabari is hyper-efficient on the offensive end. Uh, not like he's contending with some sort of defensive guru. So I would like Jabari too. I like a lot of uh, I like a lot of this Bucks game. I'm good with big bites of Giannis, big bites of Chris, uh, big bites of Jabari Parker. Well, not most. Uh, maybe not big bites of Jabari Par Parker. More uh, controlled portions of Jabari Parker. Bledsoe is not somebody I'll probably have a ton of in GPPs. I don't think that's the best fit for him. Um, you know, Knicks obviously don't have anything to play for, so they're in tank mode. Uh, I would want Giannis of anything in here. Uh, he looks like he's in an amazing spot. No real down-the-ballot guys that I'm interested in, so let's look at the Knicks. Uh, 102 implied total, 10-point underdogs in Milwaukee. Not a great spot for them. 
Uh, tough matchup defensively. Not a lot going to be jumping off the page here. Uh, Tim Hardaway, C and C minus. You know, I think he's probably uh, an okay play here. Um, he's going to be gunning, we know that much. And uh, he's still been getting minutes, you know, 35, 37, 34. I don't have a problem having him. He's, I think he's perfectly acceptable positional filler tonight. Uh, I don't generally like Frankie Smokes as a fantasy option. I generally like Emmanuel Moutier way more than I should. Uh, this is a dude that put up 8 in his last game and 41 a couple nights ago. So, all over the board. If you're playing Moutier, GPP only. You know, 4,400 is a, an enticing price for someone that should be getting the the, the minutes. Hmm. Uh, same sort of thing for Beasley. I don't feel like I can trust him anymore, but came out with uh, 30 fantasy points in his last game. They're coming in on a couple of days rest. Uh, again, I think that he's acceptable salary filler here, but not anything more than that. Um... If Kyle O'Quinn is going to get anything north of 20 minutes, you know, uh, a couple nights ago he got 26 and filled up the sheet, I think this could be a case where he plays a decent amount again. I would think he's a very nice value. Uh, so, yeah, if I were focusing on anything here, you know, I'd be okay with Hardaway as filler. I think Moody A and Beasley can be interesting GPP plays. And um, I think that Kyle O'Quinn has the potential to be, you know, a nice value center, particularly on DraftKings, where you can play more than one guy. Now, we're getting into the good stuff. New Orleans Pelicans, 107.25 implied total is 13th. Uh, they are, there is no line for this game right now. I have the Wizards as one-point favorites in New Orleans. That's probably going to grow if I had to guess. But the main takeaway here, no Anthony Davis. So, let's have a discussion. Uh, I'm not too worried defensively about anything. Um, we've got, you know what, let's grab... This isn't going to be as relevant, but grab the Pelicans, put Anthony Davis on. Let's see how this looks. AD on. I need to figure out why that's doing that. And now let's put AD off and DeMarcus Cousins off. Not a lot of minutes with both of those guys off the floor this year, which is kind of crazy to think about. So, big boost to the performances of just about everyone with these guys off the floor, obviously. Uh, it's hard to really read too much into that in like a 200 minute sample, but I'll certainly try. I wanna see the shot breakdown. This is fucking ridiculous. So, yeah, Drew should be gunning. Etah Moore is gonna be gunning. I would expect Miritich to be gunning. Oh, man. I mean, people are going to be smashing this game. Let's be clear here. But I think I'll want uh, a decent amount of Drew, but nothing crazy. He's already at 8,500, so there's only so much upside in his number. Uh, and he's going to be a main focus. The person that I would really want out of this game would be Miritich. Um, he's a straight A on both sides for me right now. Uh, and I think it's a good matchup regardless. Uh, Pelicans... Not very, yeah. Uh, 
Wizards rather, not very good against power forwards. Um, you'll see what was Anthony Davis, but this would be Miritich. Um, third best matchup, eight big games, three monsters. Uh, I'm going to have uh, a very sizable amount of, uh, of Nico tonight. Um, now following that up, uh, Czech Diallo and Okafor, both uh, going to be really solid value plays. Diallo, minimum salary on FanDuel, gets the straight A. Um, he will certainly help make uh, lineups work tonight. I don't have any issue running out Okafor either, uh, 3,800. I think there's a limit to the amount of minutes that he can play. So if anything weird was going to happen, they'll probably run Diallo out for like long-term stuff. It would surprise me to see like Okafor playing 33 minutes, something stupid like that. Um, I'm going to be smashing a ton of this stuff. Fairly normal amount of Drew. Um, I'd be okay with a little bit of Eton more. But my main focus is going to be here and here. Uh, barring any news. Um, Nico is one of the better plays on the entire board tonight. As judged by this A rating. Uh, I mean he put up 37 here. That would be a perfectly acceptable game, and that's without, you know, that's only half of a game of AD. So three straight games in the 30s, uh, he's going to have everything he can possibly handle tonight. I'm, I'm pretty excited to have a bunch of him, mostly because I like him too. I'll go to the Wiz. Whoa, how did I do that? And how did I see Josh Smith's name? <laughs> uh, okay, Wizards. I've got it 108.75, slight favorite in New Orleans. Um, good matchup. Uh, there's two ways to think about this. One, um, Pelican C is going to be what I would imagine significantly worse with AD off the floor. Let's check cleaning the glass. All right, so when AD and Boogie are off the floor, right now the team overall playing at a 54 percentile defense. What do we go to when they're not on the court? Five. This team is dreadful. Absolutely dreadful when those two guys aren't on the floor. Um, that is uh, something to very much keep in mind. Bradley Beal. 8,600, 9,100. Um, I'm inclined to say I like Beal a lot. You have to assume that Drew Holiday is going to try to do so much offensively that he'll probably let some of his defensive responsibilities be a little lax. Uh, I think that makes Beal look pretty appealing. Uh, I don't mind having a bunch of him, at least on FanDuel. The 9,100 price point on DK is a little rich for me. Um... I'll cycle in Otto Porter. I'll cycle in uh, Sadoransky. Um, I think that Markeith Morris looks pretty interesting here. Coming off a 36-point game. But I just don't think that the Pelicans' defense is going... You know, this could turn into a track meet. And if it does, I want to be on the right side of it. I think having... Um, solid exposure to a lot of the Wizards, it would be a nice strategy. Uh, specifically, I think Beal and Markeith Morris. Um, and then feel free to, to roll in Porter, Sadoransky, and Ubre as needed. Excuse me. I'm trying to uh, rack my brain here about it. To see, yeah, I I think Sadoransky, Beal, and Markeith Morris are all in in really nice spots. Um, not having AD out there is going to be a real negative for the Pelicans. So I'm going to have a lot of this game. I'm going to have a lot of game stack here. Uh, so I hope that goes the way that I just think it's going to go. Now let's get into all the good games, all the scoring. Nuggets 118 implied total is first on the day. They're six and a half point favorites at home against the Lakers. Now we're talking about fun stuff. Um, 
I think Gary Harris is fine at 6,700. Uh, he should be relatively safe in a cash scenario. From a matchup standpoint, small forward is the spot that's going to get the biggest boost. Lucky you, Wilson Chandler. I'd be okay with most of this. Um, you know, Gary Barton and... Yeah, Gary Barton. There it is. Knew I was going to whiff on something at some point. Gary Harris and Will Barton are interchangeable to me. Um, I would probably rather have the extra money from Gary Harris than pay up for Will Barton. Barton coming off the 12.9 point game uh, two nights ago in Cleveland. Um, but I'd, I'd have no problem using Harris or Barton, Chandler. Uh, I think that you know Jokic is in a great spot. He uh, he smashed on the Cavs, went for 55. The only concern is he had an, a really good game and hit 55 there. He's still 9,700 on FanDuel. I mean, 55 is great. You're never concerned with that. But he might be a bit too expensive for his own good right now. Uh, I like him. I would expect him to play well. Uh, I think that I would like him a bit more in cash than in a GPP. Jamal Murray is... You know, not somebody that I'm interested in. Uh, I really just don't like him with Paul Millsap back on the floor, and it shows. You know, Murray, 20 fantasy points, 9 fantasy points. It's not what we're looking for. And then uh, Millsap, you know, a bit of a stinker against the Cavs, which kind of surprised me because uh, he was hyper-efficient in, uh, in the front end of that back-to-back. But with another day off, uh, he's got to be slowly getting himself into where he needs to be. I would have no issues um, running out chunks of Millsap. He'll be seeing, you know, not a lot of interesting defense. Uh, you know, whether it's Kuzma or... Shit, it's hard for me to even remember who the hell is still on the Lakers. You know, even Julius Randle, like Millsap's, Millsap should have no issues there. Uh, I like basically everybody on Denver except for Jamal Murray... Um, but I don't like anybody on Denver with any sort of passion. Um, they're just, it's just a good spot. You know, like playing the Lakers is going to be good. Lakers have been playing at like a really high pace lately. So there's definitely potential for a lot of scoring. Not LL. All right. Uh, Lakers, 111.5 implied total is seventh, six and a half point underdogs in Denver. Lots to like here as well. Um, still no Brandon Ingram, so we're going to be looking at, you know, basically everybody above that dotted line is someone I'd be okay with. Uh, KCP coming off a, a not good game where he put up uh, 16 fantasy points in 39 minutes. Man, he's going to be a really interesting contract case this year. Um, you know, if we look here at the Lakers, uh, Okay matchups for shooting guards, small forwards, and centers. Uh, a little bit below for point guards and power forwards. Um, you know, I don't mind using KCP as filler. Uh, I don't really mind using Kyle Kuzma as filler. Um, I'm okay with everything here. I think that Isaiah Thomas could be a, a nice play, particularly on DK. This game should be really up and down. Um, you know, Denver's defense has been not very good in this calendar year. If I go to the four factors and do a start, we'll say since February 1st. Denver's points per possession, 29th. They have just been... Uh, not very good defensively. They've just been playing exceptionally offensively. So I think all of these guys have a, have a really solid potential. I'll cycle a lot of them into GPP lineups. They're, there's nobody like top shelf for the Lakers. Um, they're set up perfectly to be like a, you know, a little bit of filler throughout lineups. Uh, given the choices for me on FanDuel, I think um, my first priority would probably be Kuzma and then uh, Lonzo. 
Randall, KCP. Uh, for some reason, I just feel like Kuzma's in line for a big game. Um, he's the type of guy that I think will benefit the most from a game against a crappier defense. So, yeah, uh, they look good. Um, and they've been uh, a very fertile ground for fantasy scoring lately. You know, you get Lonzo in 36, Kuzma at 43, Brooke Lopez into the 30s in back-to-back games, playing 35 minutes in this last game. Um, why not? There's uh, like they're a great. Everybody looks relatively neutral because of their price, but this is a great spot to load up. Denver's defense is bad, and people sleep on that. I think. Now we go to the Blazers. Blazers are uh, four point underdogs at home. One eleven point seven five implied total, which is sixth. They are getting the Golden State Warriors without Steph Curry. Uh, Curry injured his ankle last night. Uh, not going on this uh, current road trip, so he's going to be out the next game as well. Um, so that makes uh, life pretty interesting here. So as we look at Portland, uh, only thing I'd be worried about would be Nurkic, and considering he barely plays half the time, um, I don't think this is going to be a time where they're running Nurkic out. Uh, this seems like a perfect game for one of Lillard or McCollum, and if I had to guess, it would be Dame. I think he'll thrive on this game. He'll want this victory. Uh, he's been playing great lately. Um, CJ also, you know, four four straight games of, you know, 30-plus points with one in the 53 area. Uh, so Dame is a B-plus and a B. I like that a lot. Um, CJ, B and B. Again, I like that a lot. I can do without the rest of the guys on Portland. Um, although, if you wanted to use Aminu in GPPs, I'd be perfectly okay with that. Uh, three straight games in the the low, uh, you know, 12, 12, 14 range. So, maybe he's due. Um, but this is a game for Dame and CJ. And to a lesser extent, you know, potentially like Shabazz Napier or Evan Turner. Um, I think I would prefer Dame to CJ, which I'm more than okay with. And again, since we have a lot of value out there coming up, um, no, there shouldn't be any issues with fitting him in. They're going to want this one, especially in Portland. Dame gets up for this sort of stuff. Uh, he's probably a little pissed that uh, Curry isn't healthy. Uh, if I'm Dame, I probably want him on the floor to go at him hard. But yeah, uh, I like Dame and I like CJ, but there's going to be a ton to like here. And here is Golden State with a 115.75 implied total, which is third. Um, and you're going to be getting a healthy dose of a three man unit Draymond Clay and Durant. No Curry. Uh, nothing interesting from a matchup perspective, but what we want to do is go check out uh, Curry's impact when he is out. So we want Curry on. Ooh, forgot I put those fancy paste buttons in. Okay, so something is in my VBA code where when I paste things in, it's putting in time instead of anything else. So if anybody knows how to make that not be the case, please let me know because I'm ready to smash stuff. I think my workbook got corrupted at some point. All right, so without Curry, uh, nothing interesting for Clay, nothing interesting for Iguodala, nothing interesting for Draymond, but... A definite boost to the fantasy production of Kevin Durant. Uh, I want to go ahead and just boost Durant uh, straight away to make up for that. And then I also want to take a look at who I think is going to be shooting the ball without Curry. So uh, not too much difference. I don't think it impacts anybody, just maybe an extra shot for Durant based on my adjustments. So, yeah, Draymond is 7,700, 7,400 on DK. Um, 
came off a 53-point, I believe he had a triple-double last night. I know this is a back-to-back heading to Portland, but you know I would still expect Golden State to get up for this. Uh, I love Draymond tonight. I'm going to want to have a bunch of him. Uh, I feel the same way about Durant. He's obviously going to be hella popular with Curry out, but at 9,800, 8,900 on DK, um, not having a lot of Durant would be uh, a mistake in my opinion. He probably is the best play on the entire board from a high level perspective. Um, I think Clay looks great as well. Uh, I'm going to want to have a lot of Draymond, Clay, and Durant, and I'll let the chips fall where they do because I'm willing to bet on those three guys uh, because Curry's out. That's a lot of offense. Um, I'm very interested in that. I think that Sean Livingston makes for an excellent uh, punt at point guard. Minimum salary at FanDuel, 3200 on DK. I had 29 fantasy points last night in 24 minutes. Just amazing. Um, if he can get those sort of minutes again, uh, he should be able to at least get to value. If I had to choose out of this game, I think that I would go uh, Durant, Draymond, and Clay. And that's mostly just due to Durant's position compared to Draymond. I actually... I think Draymond has a much better chance to be to have a big game relative to his salary, but at power forward, it's a little bit easier to find that sort of stuff. Whereas for Durant and small forward, you know, I want I want to max him out as much as I can. Um, and on a night with the Bucks playing and the Cavs playing, um, it might even help him help uh, suppress his ownership with LeBron and Giannis out there. One of those three guys is going to end up under-owned, and I'm anxious to see who it is because I think Giannis is in a great spot. Obviously, we know Durant is, and then uh, LeBron certainly is against the Clippers. The team that he could possibly play for. I don't know. Dude wants to go to L.A. So, yeah, uh, it's a great spot to load up. I'm not telling you guys crazy news or anything, play Kevin Durant when Steph Curry's out um, that's obvious but yeah you should be doing that he's going to show up a lot in the optimizer I'm relatively positive of it now the toilet bowl Sacramento Kings hosting the Orlando Magic I don't have a damn clue what this line is going to be it's not out uh, the Kings suck Willie Cauley Stein is questionable uh, Orlando's going to be missing Aaron Gordon uh, who's in the concussion protocol uh, Evan Fournier has a sprained MCL, I believe, but let's just say knee. So wildly large amounts of value going to be on the Magic. Uh, both of these teams are trying to be bad. You could probably play if you wanted to, if you just wanted to go to Sacramento and ask them if you can get a couple minutes. Um, clearly an exceptional matchup for the Kings. Uh it's hard to really want to focus on this because, you know, this could be a game where it's like, oh, Vince Carter went for 40. And you'd be like, what? Did you accidentally watch one of those NBA.com archive games from uh, 2006? I'm fine with De'Aaron Fox, but, you know, you got to keep an eye to see if he's even going to play. He, You know, I had him a lot with the injury. Um it's probably not a place that I would want to focus, but his ownership could end up being so suppressed because of that and because of all the other value out there that he ends up being like an okay GPP contrarian play. Um, the only real thing that I would say looks great here would be if we know that Willie Cauley Stein is going to play, um, you should have him on DraftKings. Uh, I wouldn't be very worried about anything defensively from Orlando. And Willie Cauley Stein at 6,400 is uh, criminally underpriced there. Um, you know, be aware he's been out for a couple games with injuries. So, you know, it's tricky. You want to make sure he's going to be in the lineup. We might not have news by 10 o'clock. But uh, if I were doing some DraftKings GPPs, uh, I would want to have him as a sneak because 6,400 is too low. After that, I mean, you're, what you're looking for are the hopes that you get 
either Bogdan or Buddy healed correct, which, you know, it's hard for, they're basically the same guy to me, two guys that are going to bomb up threes at similar price points and similar positions. So you hope that you get one of those two guys right. Um, like Bogdan went for 14 in the last game, but 36 in the game before that. The ranges are huge there. Everybody on this team is strictly GPP, so I like them all for flyers. I'd go all the way down to Scal if you're looking to have a flyer and a GPP. Other than that, uh, Willie Collie Stein is really the only safe spot for me. Now, Orlando, uh, this is going to be fun. So, Hazonia, 4,300 on FanDuel, 4,200 on DK. Um, he's going to be getting basically every minute that he can handle uh, with Gordon and Fournier out. He's the best value play on the board by miles and miles. Uh, you can see that with two, two A's right off the bat. He's going to be in an overwhelming amount of lineups and probably will be the highest owned player on the entire slate tonight. Uh, I feel similar about Jonathan Simmons, just not as much upside um, just because of... Uh, price and talent i guess but i'm gonna be perfectly okay having a bunch of hazonia and simmons they those are going to be two guys that i will use to be able to uh, open up more uh, big salary slots um dj augustine is fine uh, i wouldn't want to go too crazy but you know it's sacramento and uh as long as he's playing he's a perfectly solid mid-tier value point guard uh Vooch should eat, I mean, 9,200 on FanDuel, 8,300 on DK. Um, I would have no problems having a ton of Vooch. Sacramento, not very good defensively. Uh, if he's going to play 30 minutes, he should have, I mean, everything should be running through him. Uh, potential for a big night is there. Went for 52 in his last game. Um, I think that he'll be relatively popular. I don't have a ton of interest in Jonathan Isaac because I don't think they're going to ramp his minutes up enough. Um, there, I don't, I don't see that as the sort of the filler for this game. What you want is a bunch of Mario Hazonia and a bunch of Jonathan Simmons, but Hazonia is mwah, mint tonight. And finally, we go to the Clippers. Clippers one sixteen implied total is second. They are one and a half point favorites at home against the Cavs. Um, tons to like here. Cavs defense since uh, since February first, twenty fifth in the league, just not very good. So Tobias Harris, uh, perfectly neutral in my opinion. Um, I don't. I wouldn't mind having him. Eighty four hundred is a lot of money though. I mean, coming off a 49-point game, 55 in the game before that, I would have no problem running out Tobias Harris in cash. Might be a little upside limited in a GPP. Um, but Tobias Harris as a cash play looks great. Uh, Austin Rivers is rarely someone I'm really interested in. Uh, 6400 is too big of a price point on FanDuel. Uh, the guys that I would want are DeAndre Jordan, who I think is in an incredible place. Um, I'm going to end up with a lot of him. A minus across the board there. Uh, I don't think that, you know, Nance is going to be able to hang with him for very long and they don't have any other real options. If DeAndre asserts himself, uh, you know, th there's a 2020 game on the table for him. Um, I'd be more than happy having a bunch of Lou Williams. Uh, I think that he is relatively safe. I think that Harris, DeAndre, and Lou are all really solid cash game plays tonight. And I think that uh, DeAndre and Lou can both be um, uh, nice GPP plays as well. Uh, I think they're pretty universal. And then um, I'd be fine having uh, Taya Dosich with some uh, some as a value play. But yeah, my my main focus would be DeAndre Jordan and Lou Williams here. And then finally, we go to the Cavs. Uh, Cavs one fourteen point five implied total is fourth. Um, it's a nice matchup. I think that LeBron looks good. 12-5 on FanDuel, 11-5 on DK. Uh, I think that he's pretty clearly the third best uh, small forward option behind Durant and Giannis. Um, 
but you know he's gonna come to play in LA I assume that's a TV game an NBA TV game. Okay, maybe not. Uh, you know, I, I definitely like LeBron. It'd be hard not to, but I I, I think that he's a, a pretty clear third banana uh, at small forward. Nance's price is too high now. 7,800 on FanDuel. Uh, two straight games in the 40s, which is great. Uh, I don't know if that's going to be something that can continue. I'm going to temper my enthusiasm on him. Um, I think Rodney Hood looks decent on DK, but again, I've made this point before, you see all of these other guys, your George Hills, Rodney Hood, uh, JR, Clarkson, Corver Green, all these guys just end up in this middle tier of like 20-something fantasy points, save for that game where George Hill went absolutely bananas. Um, it's hard for me to like much. Uh, you can talk me into most of these guys as, you know, interesting GPP punt plays, but from a focus standpoint, I think the only guy that's like really and truly playable is LeBron. Man, it's going to be a fun night. I'm excited for Locke already. I want to load these into the optimizer and let it rip and see how crazy it gets. Because it's going to be a wild, wild night. And if news comes out close to Locke, similar to that TJ Warren nonsense from last night, man, there's going to be some scrambling. But yeah, I am very excited. It's a 10-game slate with value from the beginning. Uh, those are the ones that I sort of like the most. You end up getting a lot of lineups that you're like happy that you built. Bump up the optimization. Let it rip. Nope. That's not going to work. Probably actually need to let people be able to be picked. Yeah, so you can see tons of Hazonia, tons of Diallo, a lot of Nico, Chris Paul, Durant, Jonathan Simmons, DeAndre Jordan. That makes me very, very happy. Um, so let's go Hazonia, let's go Diallo, let's go Nico, let's go Paul, let's go Durant. Where do we end up there? So we're covered there. We got Paul. You know, I'd be okay looking at like Bradley Beal. Yeah, like that's a dream lineup to me in a GPP. Paul Moutier can pop off if he needed to. Bradley Beal, Lou Will, Durant, Hazonia, Miritich, Diallo, uh, Miles Turner as a like a you know lower owned but high upside center. I like it a lot. This one gets Rodney Hood and Dame involved. Um, it's going to be, oh, it's going to be so much fun to build lineups today. Let's look at DK. I've been dragging ass all week. Uh, sleep has been at a premium. I actually slept in our guest room last night uh, so that I didn't have dogs on me and I could actually get a like, solid night's sleep, and I still feel like I'm dragging. So sleeping in tonight into tomorrow, it's going to be a really good feeling. But, man, I'm going to be geeked for getting lineups in tonight live stream is going to be fun should definitely be there six o'clock bump up the rando go not that we don't know what this is going to look like but oh weird hazonia diallo cp3 miritich durant i feel like i'm running this on fandle All right, so we grab Hazonia, we grab Diallo, we grab CP3, we grab Durant, we grab Miritich. Where do we end up? Oh, like right here. Paul, DeRozan, Durant, Miritich, Miles Turner, Jonathan Simmons, Check Diallo, Mario, Hazonia. Sign me up. I'm going to be cashing checks with that one. I don't even have to look any further. I love that. 
I wish the lock was in five minutes because I would want to roll that out in something big. It's going to be a great night. Um, keep an eye out for news. Uh, it can only get more and more ridiculous as it comes out. Uh, so follow me on Twitter. You know, like and subscribe here if you have questions or comments. Uh, feel free to use the comment section here or Twitter or Reddit. Um, it's going to be a really, really entertaining night. Uh, I hope everybody's as excited as I am. Um, big things coming, people. Big things coming. I'll see you guys tonight.